We started these populations each with less than 100 beetles, and by the time they finished spreading, after 10 generations, we had roughly one beetle for every person in Cincinnati. Um, so there was a lot of beetles. We moved all those beetles um, with an aspirator and some soft forceps, some soft tweezers. So uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of beetle moving, a lot of beetle sucking up, uh, and I can't eat black-eyed peas anymore. All right, we are in Anderson Biology Labs at Rice University in the Department of Biosciences. And we're in uh, our lab, which is an ecology lab. And most people think of ecologists as working in nature, kind of crawling around in the mud and, and the dirt. And we do a little bit of that, but then we also do this. The idea is that we are population ecologists, and that means that we want to understand how populations work. Why do populations grow? Why do they decline? Why do they spread or retract through space? So here we have like a starting patch, for example, and it's full of beetles that haven't really moved very much. And as we proceed down the line, we can see that we get fewer and fewer beetles in all of these patches until we get to the very leading edge. There's only a, a couple beetles in this patch, actually. So out of this population, these beetles are the best dispersers. And um, if they mate, the idea is if dispersal ability is heritable, they'll pass on these strong dispersal genes to their offspring. So these, these are like two, two gold medal beetles at the leading edge of this invasion. Um, and over multiple generations, you can get evolution for um, better and better dispersal ability, which makes these invasions spread faster. I think there could be a healthy skepticism about what is the value of studying beetles crawling over beans inside of a growth chamber? What does that really tell us about what's going on in nature? And I think that would be a very uh, appropriate and healthy question to ask. So I think the value of a study like this is that it allows us to understand some basic mechanics of how populations move. And with that basic information, we could build a foundation that might allow us to one day be better at understanding how invasive species will invade new landscapes, how native species will, will spread in response to climate change. These are some of the biggest challenges we have as, as citizens and scientists over the next century. And what we're trying to do is to lay the groundwork, is to develop some very, very basic principles for how does this process work? What's the role in this case of evolution in modifying this process? And if we could understand it here, then maybe we have some hope of understanding it outside. Do you guys want to try? <laughs>